While we all love white knuckling it through a high speed race or a frantic fist fight, sometimes you just want to play a game that lets you totally relax. From agricultural adventures to fishing trips and laid back island sculptures, these Xbox Game Pass titles are the perfect way to unwind at the end of a long day. After becoming stressed out from all the hustle and bustle of modern life, the hero of Stardew Valley decides to head back to their grandfather's farm to what? Of course, pursue a simple life out in the country. And honestly, who among us hasn't considered quitting our job or leaving school and going to hang out with some cows instead? I know I have once or twice. The gameplay of this farm management sim takes place at a soothingly gentle pace as you plant seeds, grow crops and build relationships with the other villagers. The 16-bit visuals gradually change their shading as you move from one season to the next and the game's delicate soundtrack adapts to suit the mood. All in all, the valley is really just a lovely place to spend some time in. And just a tip, if you do find yourself itching for just a little bit of action, you can always head down to the mines. The vast deserts of Sable are also a gorgeous place to be, in no small part thanks to the game's delicate hand-drawn style which turns every dune into a work of art. You play as a young child striking out into the world by themselves as part of a coming-of-age ritual, searching for a mask that speaks to who they truly are. Gliding along the back of your hover bike, you'll encounter jagged mountains, mysterious caves and the technological ruins left behind by those who came before all the while chilling out to the hypnotic sound of ambient music provided by experimental pop group Japanese Breakfast. Discovering each new piece of the map is a joy in its own right, especially on the Xbox Series X, where each new landmark appears in the full vividness of 4K. What you won't find are enemies of any kind. There's also no way for you to fail, no main quest you need to complete, and not much in the way of puzzles. The mission here is just to go. Leave your real world worries behind and take a walk out into the desert. If all that time in the desert has left you feeling just a little bit parched, uh, then Lake is the ideal place to revitalize your spirits. Meredith is another city dweller who has been left feeling burnt out by work, love and life in general, to be honest. So she heads to the sleepy town of Providence Oaks for a couple of weeks for a little bit of R&R, &R, while also filling in for her father as the local delivery person. This then provides you with the perfect excuse to get to know your neighbors. While it looks like a quaint mail delivery simulator, Lake is actually all about the relationships you build while you're on the job. From activist lumberjacks to adolescent mechanics, everyone you meet has their own story to tell, and what role Meredith gets to play in those stories is entirely up to you. There are literally no wrong answers here, and if all you want to do is drive around taking in the scenery, then that's absolutely fine as well. The game's soft, cel-shaded visuals are sure to put your eyes at ease, especially in 4K and at up to 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X. But if you're looking to cover a little more ground, then Microsoft Flight Simulator might be the way to go. Flying a plane might not sound like the most relaxing activity in the world, and Microsoft Flight Simulator is also full of highly technical landing challenges that are perfect for those who want to test their skills. But it's also great if you just want to glide above the clouds for a while. The meticulously recreated world map means that you'll always have some stunning scenery to take in while you fly, but you'll find the ride especially turbulence-free if you've got an Xbox Series X or S and a 120Hz monitor with VRR support to go with it. But even without those high-flying technical additions, Microsoft Flight Simulator delivers the relaxing sensation of staring out of a plane window and watching the world roll by beneath you. One of the reasons that kids love building blocks so much is that they aren't constrained by the idea that what they construct has to make any sort of logical sense. It's just fun to build stuff, you know? And Townscaper, finally, a game understands that. While other city building sims might have you tearing your hair out trying to achieve absolute efficiency, Townscaper gives you total freedom to slap your island metropolis together however you see fit. Plonk down the roads, buildings and other bits you want and watch as the whole thing begins to come together with winding staircases and sneaky alleyways springing into existence in between your chosen pieces. And if nothing else, the little popping noise you get each time you place a new part down is all but guaranteed to help you relax. Ah, see? 
Most post-apocalyptic games are filled with mutants and cults and all sorts of things that make them about as relaxing as a bubble bath full of electric eels. But my time at Porsche is different. In this particular dystopia, you get to build your very own brave new world as one of the chief architects of Humanity 2.0. Doing so involves the same pleasing game loop that titles like Minecraft thrive on. You head out into the wild to chop, mine and hunt for materials, then bring them back to Porsche to see what you can build. New materials allow you to build better equipment, which in turn allows you to gather resources more effectively and so on and so forth. Between the steady rhythm of the game and the satisfaction of seeing your little town slowly grow, your time at Porsche is sure to be just as lovely. Now I've been told that moving house is one of the most stressful things you'll ever do, but in the realm of video games here, where we're often being chased by dragons or asked to drive supercars across Mexico at 200 miles per hour, it actually feels kind of mellow, which might be why the multi BAFTA nominated unpacking works so well. This Zen puzzle game initially seems like a simple block fitting exercise where you're working out how to fit everything together in a room as you unpack one box after another. But as various items you're placing together start to piece together, you begin to get a picture of the life that they belong to. The fact that you never get to see the characters in question or even hear any more of their story just adds to the tranquility. You're given a brief snapshot into their life to quietly ponder over and then it's on to the next house and the next box. It's simple, it's surprisingly moving, and I absolutely love every time I find the Eiffel Tower again. And once you're done unpacking those boxes, you can go outside and mow the lawn. Okay, so this video is starting to sound a bit like a chore list, but Lawn Mowing Simulator makes yard work weirdly enjoyable, I swear. Sure, you've heard the term touch grass, but why touch grass when you can mow it? There's something about taking a tangled patch of weeds and sculpting it into a perfectly manicured carpet of tidy green grass that's just incredibly satisfying. Maybe it's the meditative hum of the mower, maybe it's the feeling that you finally have control over one tiny portion of the universe, or maybe it's just fun to shred stuff with a big machine. For one reason or another, Lawn Mowing Simulator is simply good for what ails you. Oh, and they've also added a Dinosaur Safari Park DLC, so you can cut the grass next to a Tyrannosaurus if that's something you've always wanted to do. Incredibly specific bucket list you've got there, but we're not here to judge. Moonglow Bay asks you to become a fisher of men, tossing out a line to the other people in your town and helping them connect with each other once again. Although you will also need to be a fisher of fish too, since it's kind of your job. Anyway, you do play as a simple fisherman who has recently lost his best friend and in turn his zest for life. And you're really not the only person struggling too. The whole town seems to have had the colour drained from it, with everyone struggling beneath one burden or another. All in all, it's a pretty gloomy place. But once you start catching fish and serving them up to the locals, life quickly returns to Moonglow Bay. The money you earn selling your catches can also be used to repair some of the dowdier buildings, and giving them to locals helps you bring them up out of their funk while also giving your character a renewed sense of purpose. You might not have previously believed that fishing was the answer to all of life's problems, but spend just a little bit of time in Moonglow Bay and you'll buy it hook, line and sinker. Finally, what could be more chill than being surrounded by rainbow-coloured paper mache animals filled with candy? Viva Piñata is one of the strangest premises which a video game was ever built on. It puts you in control of your very own piñata garden where you'll need to grow plants and fend off any wandering ruffians to create verdant paradise for your piñata pals to thrive in. The nicer your garden is, the more exotic animals you'll attract, and from there you can breed them together to create all sorts of bizarre concoctions. Just be careful because some of them piñatavores who feed on other piñatas and honestly what are these words I'm even saying, this is ridiculous. But if you're looking for the relaxing routine of a gardening game with an added dash of silliness to keep you smiling, Viva Piñata and its sequel Trouble in Paradise are both sitting in the Xbox Game Pass library just waiting for you to bash them open. So quick survey, do you feel more relaxed yet? Has your heart rate come down just by looking at these games? Excellent, I hope it has. So feel free to tell us about your own favourite chill out, cosy vibe games down in the comments. Just be sure to do so in a nice gentle tone, please. And also don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell too. That way you won't have to worry about missing out on all the latest Xbox news. Bye bye.